Hey, if you're like myself and were born ugly in modern times, there's a lot of things you can do to fix it, like wearing makeup to hide your imperfections, or throwing on a face mask to treat acne, or roleplay as the Canadian Prime Minister. These are modern luxuries though. Pre-modern ugly people weren't so lucky. For example, to appear more attractive in ancient China, young girls would have their feet permanently disfigured to make a sexy shape. Their words, not mine. This was known as Chinese foot binding, and to give you an overview of how it all worked, there's essentially four main steps. 1. Grab a girl between the ages of 4 and 9. No, wait. Or, or, the age of the victim matters here because the younger they are, the easier their feet can be broken. 2. Dunk their feet in a bucket of water filled with herbs and animal blood. This part is important because it'll soften up the foot and make it easier to shape. 3. Just jack that thing up. The goal here is basically to snap the foot in half so it's pointing down. Then, you crank the four smaller toes underneath so it gets this nasty shape. And by step 4, most of the work is done now. All you gotta do is muzzle those dogs by wrapping them as tight as humanly possible. These bindings had to be kept on for life, only being removed when they got dirty or needed to be tightened. This forced a girl's foot to stay in this awkward position as they aged, which could lead to a foot size as small as 4 inches. And besides just being straight up horrible to look at, they came with a bunch of side effects too, like chronic lifelong pain, the inability to walk, and in some cases, removal of the foot entirely due to infection. Pretty gross. Now, I know people back then were freaks, but I'd personally rather sun my cerebrum than have one of these things touch my leg at night. It doesn't matter what I think though, cause these necrotic nubs were highly sought after and even graded. A woman with a 4 inch foot had what's called a golden lotus, where a 5 incher was a silver lotus. And just like the Gen 2 Pokemon games, gold was by far the best, with silver just being merely acceptable. Anyways, owning a pair of these was considered a status symbol. The logic was, if you were unable to walk, you were unable to work. So therefore, the more messed up your feet were, the wealthier your background was. They also came with the added bonus of lotus shoes, which were basically the crocs of ancient China since they could be customized to show off their owner's personality. You like frogs or basketball? Easy. How about uh, fish or terrible video games? Boom. There you go. If you're not into it though, no worries. The Chinese government banned foot binding in 1912, ending what was easily one of the worst beauty trends in history, but not the most dangerous. That title goes to the next trend of pale, smooth skin. So this beauty standard is still around, but it peaked between the 16th and 19th century. And other than the racist undertones, there's nothing really wrong with the standard itself, more so how people went about achieving it. For example, one dangerous way to turn yourself into a Stephanie Myers character was through a lead-based paint called Venetian Ceruse. This was a mixture of vinegar, water, and, you know, lead, which would be applied to the face as makeup, turning the wearer more white than a pickleball tournament. But, as you might expect, it also led, you get it, to a lot of side effects. Such as, nausea, chronic headaches, abdominal pain, cognitive dysfunction, hypertension, kidney failure, liver failure, other, less cool sounding organ failure, cancer, and of course, death. Now, you probably think people back then just weren't aware of the dangers, but actually, most people were, they just didn't care. In fact, their biggest concern was that the makeup had made them even uglier. This is because lead irritates the skin and causes it to peel away, leading to more imperfections and for a lot of people, further abuse of the makeup. My bad. Over the course of its roughly 300 year long history, Venetian Ceruse likely caused a lot of deaths for people who simply wanted pale skin. But honestly though, trying to look like you've never seen the sun before by coating your face with poisonous makeup is pretty lame. I mean, I've managed to achieve the look in my own life simply by rotting in my apartment all day for years, watching my relationship with friends and family deteriorate as my body becomes increasingly fragile, all while the unrelenting passage of time becomes ever more apparent and inescapable. But hey, if that's not your shtick, how about gargling the piss of a Portuguese dude? 
So I'm going to need you guys to stick with me here, because I went down an absolute rabbit hole while researching this one. But, as I'm sure we all know, shiny, white teeth have been a beauty standard forever. But what you probably don't know is what the Romans may or may not have done to achieve this. Gargling the urine of Portuguese men. So to give a quick background, if you, for some reason, decide to collect your own urine and then ferment it, the urea compound will slowly break down and turn into ammonia, which is a powerful cleaner. The Romans would use this for a bunch of different things, like cleaning laundry, leather making, general sanitation, and potentially as mouthwash. In fact, the urine industry in Rome was so lucrative that sometime in the first century, a tax was made on the sale of all pee. And quick little side note here, when Emperor Vespasian was getting complaints from his son that the tax was gross, he said something along the lines of, Does the smell of this coin offend you? Uh, no? Well, it comes from piss. Idiot. And that is roughly the origins of the phrase pecunia non olet, which means money doesn't stink. Alright, so with all that background out of the way, we know that the Romans loved urine, and the theory goes that some of them in Iberia would swish it around their mouths to whiten their teeth and look more attractive. Now, I think this is great, but do we have any real proof? Actually, yeah. There's this poem, Carmen 39, by Gaius Valerius Catullus, where he makes fun of an Iberian dude for gargling his urine, and I'll paraphrase it to prove my point. This guy has nice teeth, but sucketh, does he? Brother cleans them with his own pee. This historical document proves that it was at least somewhat common for dudes in Iberia to use urine as mouthwash, but it was definitely looked down upon. So does that mean that the myth of Portuguese piss gargling is true? No, not really. First off, and this is a big one, the country of Portugal didn't even exist until hundreds of years after Rome fell. Secondly, while Iberians did live inside the bounds of the Roman Empire during this time, they weren't really Roman. It's just like how the Quebecois live inside the bounds of Canada, but they aren't really people. To give my irrelevant opinion on an irrelevant topic, I think the story is half true and half made up. Some people near the Portugal area were definitely polishing their teeth with urine hundreds of years before the country existed, while technically under Roman control. So, I kind of see where the myth comes from. Was there a lucrative Portuguese pea trade with ships traveling back and forth from the Iberian Peninsula while filled to the brim with urine? Sadly, no. The country didn't exist yet and we have no record of such a thing. I'm guessing at some point, Portugal was added in to make the story sound cooler, and now all these garbage articles and reddit posts are popping up, probably being fueled by AI. So there you go. It was a bit of a rabbit hole and literally no one asked for it, but hopefully I've cleared up the myth of Portuguese piss gargling, and maybe you'll learn something new. Alright guys, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.